Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Now he didn't get the same level devil now. He got more evil devils. What's he doing? He's building himself a fortress. Everybody knows that the pimp bishop preacher has a bodyguard. Those devils that walk with the pimp preacher are the devils that protect him. All this is demon, demon, demonic mess. Y'all, when y'all see these preachers walking around with bodyguards, pushing you away from them and stuff, like, like there's, the, like there's the Secret Service with uh, President or Barack Obama. Jesus didn't walk around with bodyguards. The kids could run up to Jesus and had, grab him and hug him, and he was right there with the people. Why are you lifted up so high that you got to have bodyguards? You so much. You so big. You like a Hollywood star. You're a clown. Look at this. Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. They live there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so. Now listen to this. Shall it be also unto this wicked generation? What's that telling us? The devil's coming back. He's coming back to this generation. Bigger and better than ever. This joker's coming in this time. Heavy with reinforcements. And he's wiping minds out. You can't see this? The kids in middle school having oral sex with each other. Animals. Crazy. People off the Disney Channel, they make it through 18 years of, of living, then they go crazy. Entertainment is Lady Gaga, Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, Trina. Nasty. Unclean. Filthy. And they have them on Good Morning America. The Ellen DeGeneres show. Prime time. Nasty, filthy. Jerry Springer. What's his name? What's his name? Maury Povich or what's his name? What's his name? Is that it? Povich. Filthy trash on TV. Midday. Filthy. The unclean spirit is back. Bigger and better than ever. Now, here's what we got. We're fighting an interdimensional warfare. The fourth dimensional world is the spirit world. It's actually sealed to your senses. You don't pick it up unless it opens up. And you have central, uh, you have spiritual perception to pick it up. Your five senses can't engage this realm. You got to have spiritual senses that have been fine-tuned. They've been refined and, and set place in, in place to pick up those gateways when they open and the beings that come across from there. So it takes time for God to actually reformat your mind to actually deal with the spirit world. You know and I know if you got saved today and the spirit world open up to you tomorrow, you'd be running like somebody crazy down the street yelling. That's what would happen. Because you see things that it would just be too much for your carnal mind to deal with. So he has to progressively and systematically, here a little and there a little, transition us over to people that can deal with the spirit world. How does he do that? He takes his word and he begins to deal with your mind. What's he after? Metamorphosis, transformation. See, fear is a spirit. It's not normal to be afraid. The Bible says God hasn't given you a, a spirit of fear. But of what? Power. Love, power, and a sound mind. So if you have fear, that's abnormal. It's something wrong. I got to deal with it. I got to get rid of this fear. The primary fear we're talking about is fear of the spirit world. I was driving somewhere the other way. They were my wife. And we were going across a body of water on a bridge. At night time, you know, you're driving across a big expansion bridge at night time. There's a body of water on either side of you. 
It almost makes you feel like we're driving into nowhere. You know, it's like when it's a dog night and no cars around and you got nothing out there that you can see that big expansion bridge, those big beam, that big, you know, that big wires going up to the sky and you're looking at all that. All you do is focus in on the lines in the street. You know, just don't look left or right. Stay right in the middle of these lines. I hope we clear this. It's close to the man. You just out there. It's like it's, is it swaying? It feels like it's swaying. I feel, is there any wind out there? <laughs> Unless you, you know, if you, if you, if you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. It's feel like you're going in the, so you just stay in the lines until you make it across. That's what it is. Well, I think, you know, that's how it is walking by faith and not by sight. Watch the lines. Don't look at all the stuff around you. Just watch the lines. Keep it stay in the word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If the devil can pull you out of his word, he's got you. Don't think the word. When he confronted Jesus, it is written. He hates that. He hates it. Watch how they get them on Larry King Live they used to before he went off the air and now it's Pierce Morgan, Bill O'Reilly. Any one of those talk shows they'll bring on little Joe Lowstein. It's pitiful when he comes on. It's just so pitiful to watch him. T D Jakes. Any one of them. Rick Warren. They get them out of the Bible. They get them to discuss things using their own opinions. They'll ask Joe Lowstein, what do you think about homosexuality? Well, the scripture says that it's a sin. And he'll keep on, well, if, 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 if it was a homosexual wedding, would you go? Well, yes, I would go and support my homosexual friends. Well, hold, this is a sin. You just said. Mm-hmm. See, he's got him. He catches him in his words because he pulls him out of the Bible. See, if it's me, I'm telling them, look. It's a sin. Period. Not the, you, see, you, you, you couch words and you couch phrases and things like the Bible says it's a sin. And to me personally, according to the way I read it, it's a sin. But I don't put that on you. No, it's a sin for everybody. <laughs> see, it's not, it's not going to, you know, like it's, I believe this, so that's for me. But what you believe is for you. No, it's a sin, period. And you will go to hell for it. We got to stop trying to soften the blow of the Bible. It is what it is. Well, that's your opinion. What it says in Leviticus is an abomination. God says, I am the Lord thy God, I change not. If it was an abomination then, it's an abomination now. Now, you're left to deal with that. However you want to. But we not there in this Bible, not one inch, not one iota, not one niche of it is going to change. He says, every I will be dotted, every T will be crossed. He calls it a jot and a tittle. Everything is going to be just like he said it. He's not going to change it. And you got to just set in concrete as far as what the Bible says and what it means and what it actually reveals to us as truth. And just sit there. The devil hates that. He hates for you to walk in the word. Not legalistic. But just a believer. I believe what he said. I adhere to it. I practice it. I preach it. I believe it. That's the way it is. And see, don't make it. Don't, the worst thing you'll ever do with the Bible is to make it impersonal. It's personal. If you're doing this. It applies to you. If you're a fornicator, you're going to the lake of fire. The Bible says in Revelation, every fornicator will have this place in the lake of fire. That's the way it is. I don't care who's doing it in Hollywood. I don't care who's having babies outside of wetlock. I don't care about Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Every fornicator will have their place in the lake of fire. Every liar will be there. Every adulterer, every homosexual, it's the way it is. And if you speak not according to the law and the prophets, let you be accursed. 
And I don't want to be cursed. You warn the wicked. You warn the righteous. Our skins are too thin. That's what's wrong. So God through a transformation of the mind has to make the skin thicker. So you can take the heat. It's not about what God will or won't do. God can do a lot of things and make your eyeballs tingle if he did it. But can you take? Can you take the reaction to you? Can you take the retribution? Can you take the persecution? Can you take the hatred? Can you take that filthy, vehement response to you? Can you take being ostracized by everybody around you, including family members, old friends, and on the job, everywhere you go? You're gum on the bottom of somebody's shoe because of this gospel. Can you take it? Or do you want to fit in and belong? Do you want, are you looking for a friend? Somebody to be your buddy or your pal? And about that, this is a warfare. It's an inner dimensional warfare. What's happening? For these spirits to come across, they need what we call stargates, portals, conduits, channels to cross over. They just can't come over here. Helter skelter. At the doorway of every portal, you must have a sacrifice. You must have a dead body. They'll use animals on the low scale. They're looking for humans to sacrifice up to open those gateways up. 50 to 60 million babies in this country. Blood sacrifices. Cloaking under the name abortion. Worldwide, I think Tom and I talked about that. We figured about, what, 300 million probably globally? The population of America. Yeah. Internationally, worldwide. The population of America aborted worldwide. 300 million people about thereabouts. If you think these things aren't coming across, you better think again. Not to mention the murders that take place in witchcraft covens. Drinking of blood. They do filthy, perverse things to open up doorways. Standing in the middle of a hexagram. Performing these rituals, blood rituals. You get gateways. Why do witches want, want portals opened? Witches seek demonic possession. See, the more demons you have, the more what you have? Power. The more power you have. So I said I'm bringing seven others more wicked than myself. They actually are craving and soliciting demonic habitation. Entities, they call them. Spirit guides. The more you have in you, the more powerful you are. Many spirits in witchcraft. The Holy Spirit in Christ. At the gateway to allow the Holy Spirit to come is a dead man hanging on a cross. He opened up what? A a stargate, a portal. That's what he did. He's lying there at a gateway. Where was the gateway? You got to know this now to understand what went on. This is a spiritual thing. If you don't understand this, you don't really understand what salvation is. The Bible is telling us something in written form about how this works. Jesus took his cross up to Golgotha. If you go to Golgotha right now in Jerusalem, in Israel, you're going to see a skull-faced mouth that's going to look just like a skull. It looks like two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. It's like a skull. This is what it looks like at the top of the mountain. You can see the skull on it. You slam that cross down into that skull and you hang a dead man on it. Now, all that's representations of something. The cross is driven into the mind and Adam is spread out on it. Jesus is the second Adam. How did that that open up a stargate? How did it open up a portal? Sacrifice on the God. Huh? Sacrifice on the God giving his life. Say I mean say that slow, I can't hear you. Oh, sacrifice on the God by giving his life. A sacrifice unto God by giving his life. But what was significant was that he ended 
the Adamic race. That's why the veil in the tabernacle was rent from the top to the bottom. It rent from the top to the bottom to let you know no man tore it. God tore it open. He opened the gateway back into the Holy of Holies and his presence. Because he had satisfied the sin problem. He staked out Adam on a, in a skull. He drove him into the skull on a tree, a cursed man, to open up a stargate. So your identification is with a crucified Christ. But where is he ha- what does he have to be crucified? In the skull. It's in the mind. It's where the problem was. Can't you see in Ephesians chapter 4? You're alienated from the life of God in your mind. That's where it is. So, Jesus satisfied the dictates of God. Adam staked out on a cross, driven into Skull Mountain, Golgotha. Two different languages, it means the same thing. Golgotha and Calvary, the same thing, Skull Mountain. Jesus dead, killing the Adamic race. Nailing the law that applied to the Adamic race to the cross. See, the law was all about constraining Adam. That's all it was. It was a tool to constrain Adam. He's a rebel. He's anti-God. He's anti-Christ. He's alienated from God. So you get a law to restrain the fallen nature. Now God has created a new and living way. So, out of Jesus flowed his blood. The blood is now applied to your mind to wash it. Now how do you sprinkle the vessels in the Old Testament with blood? You take hyssop, which is a what? A hyssop is a plant. It's just like you go out and get a hedge out in the front yard, cutting off a piece of a hedge. It's got little you know, furrows on the end of it. You dump the plant in the blood. And then you just sprinkle it in the holy in in in, in, the, in the amongst the vessels and amongst the people. You remember in the Old Testament, he sprinkled the priest. He 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 sprinkled everything that's going to be used in the service of God with the with the hyssop. And he kept dipping it in blood and just throwing blood on everything. So what we need in the New Testament is to have a hyssop throw the blood on us. What's the hyssop? The word, the word of God. That's how he transforms us. That's why you got to stay in it. Meditate in it. Live in it. Breathe it. Eat it. Sing it. That's how it does. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of your testimony. And you love not your life unto death. That's the way out. That's the escape route. But what does it do? As your mind is being transformed. Romans 12.1 the word for transformation there is metamorpho. We get the English word metamorphosis from it. Just like a butterfly that used to be a caterpillar. You changed in life type, in nature, in appetite. You see, it's, it's, a, it's a nature change. The hidden revelation of the Bible in religion is this. It's all about your nature. This is a genetic thing. It's all about chromosomes. Genes, DNA, bloodline inheritance. That's what the mystery of the Bible is. We're fooling around with people who haven't been regenerated and giving them religious works to do. You're going to kill yourself. You're going to be anxiety stricken. You know how many people are now on antidepressant drugs? You know how many young people are on antidepressant drugs? Valium and Ritalin and, and people got ADHD and ADD and they got adult ADHD and adult this and adult that and all kinds of anxiety problems and all this stuff trying to act out good things when they are evil inside. The devil has them bound. But if you go the route that I'm describing, it's going to lead you to life and peace. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So he uses this Bible as a tool to splatter that blood. 
You're drinking the blood. You're eating the flesh to die. You're drinking the blood to live. Jesus said unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can't have any part in this. What he was really saying was you can't commune with me. My flesh to die, the body of Christ to die, the blood to drink to live. So I go through the cross and I'm sprinkled with blood. Remember the Old Testament when a sacrifice was made, the two people who cut the covenant had to walk through the sacrifice together? That's how they cut a blood covenant. You kill the animal, split it in half, and you and the other person you cut the covenant with walk through the sacrifice together. You know what that meant? What that, what that, what that meant? It meant that if, if Tom and I cut a blood covenant and we walk through the, through the animal together, what he just said to me was, if I don't keep this covenant, may I become as this animal? It was a, it was, it was a, it was a swearing to your own death at what it was, what you were doing. So God is saying, the body of Jesus Christ is there. I have, I have sworn to uphold my side of the bargain. I will save you, but you got to walk through this, this sacrifice. You got to do your part. This is a fifty-fifty type of operation. Whomsoever will, let him come and drink of the waters that are freely given. You can't claim to be saved and never go through the process. You know how many people are stand out of the process and claim to be saved? That's garbage. Jesus staked out like an animal on a cross, driven into a skull, hanging there. Blood spewing out to clean us. His word is given to clean us. That hyssop, the hyssop is the word. It's splattering blood whether you know it or not. It's transforming you. It's changing your thinking processes. It's changing your perceptions, your likes, your dislikes, where you want to go, where you don't want to go, what you're listening to, what you won't listen to. People who used to be interested in you are no longer interesting anymore. Music that used to appeal to you, it drops. It, it does it all by itself. That's why I tell people. You don't have to try. Go to, through the process and die. The process will kill you all by itself. If you mean business and you come to Jesus and you begin to meditate in this word day and night. If you set your affections on above and not on the earth. If you do what he said to do. And obeying him. It will mortify Adam and bring to life Jesus. All by itself. So you don't need rules and regulations. Touch not, taste not, handle not. The Bible says it has a form of godliness and will worship. But it doesn't hold to the substance, the head, Jesus. You're just acting out righteous acts with no substance to it. We don't need that. We need the stargate to open up. For the Holy Ghost to come upon us. If he can clean the vessel, he'll fill the vessel. It's a process. He's cleaning to fill. Slowly displacing Adam. And replacing Adam with the second Adam. The new Christ. The new creature. You're taking off the old man, the Bible says. Ephesians chapter 4. Taking off the old man. Renewed in the spirit of your mind and putting on the new man. See, all these images in the Bible make sense if you understand what he's doing. Paul says in Galatians, I think it's Galatians chapter 2, I'm, I'm actually in turmoil, I'm wrestling with you, I'm, I'm travailing with you in birth pains until Christ be formed in you. It's the formation of a new creature, another you. Fear will go away because Christ is not afraid. We'll have the mind of Christ. So he's not afraid of the devil. He's not afraid of Dracula's castle. He's not afraid of the wolf man. He don't care. He's not in awe of Michelle Obama. If Michelle Obama yelled at him, he wouldn't get scared, you know. Some people are like that. If a woman yelled at them, they'll be more afraid of a woman than they would a man. I told my husband he better. And the husband just. <laughs> Look, what's wrong with you? What's your wife's name? Harriet? I'll talk Harriet. What's wrong with you? What are you, what are you talking to this guy like this? Well, I'll talk to her. You won't talk to her. Sit over there, fella. Let me talk to your wife. Why would you be afraid of another human being? This is crazy. Obama got mad at you. So what? So what? 
you made the Pope angry. This is crazy. We got to have our minds transformed. We're sitting here afraid of shadows, afraid of nothing. Things that go bump in the night. It's all a matrix. It's all virtual reality. None of this is real. But what I'm saying won't have any effect on you until it really happens to you. See, this is not something you get up and try to act like you got it. That's what most people do. They'll leave here saying, oh yeah, we're not to be afraid. And you try to act like you're not. You'll be your knees knocking together. We can hear your knees clicking together. You walk down the driveway trying not to be afraid. <laughs> hey man, it's got to really happen to you. You got to really be crucified with Christ, buried and resurrected to get what I'm talking about. And it's a process. You got to understand what the mystery of the cross really is. It's a gateway. It's a stargate. It's a transformational tool to open that gateway to your mind and change your mind. Renovate your mind. Regenerate your mind. Renew your mind. Restore your mind to sanity. Did you know that every one of us in sin had gone insane? You were crazy? You don't believe that? You just think back. Don't think back too far and too long about some of the stuff you did. You had to be crazy to do that. You look back at yourself and wonder. I don't know. I don't know what I, I don't. I don't even know what I was. Who was that? It was you. Under demonic inspiration controlling your mind. The places that you went to, you could have been killed a number of times if God had allowed it. Just being stupid. See, this is what it's all about. We need regeneration. Why? Because we're fighting an uh, interdimensional warfare with spirits. And we can't win without regeneration and becoming a new creature in Christ. They're walking up the front and down the back of the religious church world, not taking on what I'm saying here today. All right. Strong man. If you've got any sense in your head at all, you can see several strong men have come across. We can sit here and name them. We can name some of the people that are strong men just sitting right here. You don't have to even look far. You can just off the top of your head look at folks. That's a strong man right there. That's a stronghold. That's a strong man. They control people groups. They control thinking processes. The Vatican houses a strong man. Got a what on the people? A stronghold. Islam is a strong man. Now understand how this thing is set up. The devil operates a hierarchy. Ephesians chapter 6. Principalities, powers, Rulers of the daughters of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. If you're just getting saved, you listen by stickum. If check the scriptures out that I named because I can't, for the sake of time, read all of this. Because if I did, we'd be here till Tuesday. <laughs> so if I if I reference a scripture, just go and read the whole passage because I named chapters, so you can read. I do it for for you to read the whole chapter. That's why I mention a whole chapter, so you just won't read like a verse or two. Because to get the real meaning and revelation of most scriptures, you've got to read the whole context of it. Ephesians chapter 6, you got a hierarchy name there, hierarchy of Satan. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. But that rulers of the darkness of this world is a word that is pronounced cosmocrator, world ruler. Above them is the satanic council of fallen angels. Spiritual wickedness in high places. You come down to the level of the world rulers. They rule continents. Continents are broken down into what? Countries Countries or nations. Nations are are broken down into providences or states. States are broken down into local municipalities, cities, counties, your block. It can even be broken down into just you. You know, the devil will assign somebody to just you if you get dangerous enough. You know, you get dangerous enough for you to move up the feeding chain. So a world ruler that rules a continent will be assigned to you. 
Because you pray so much, you fast so much, you seek God so much, you deny yourself so much, that they'll assign hierarchies in the spirit world to stop you. If everybody else fails, you know who's coming to see you? Oh, Diablos himself. Jesus got filled with the Holy Ghost at the Jordan River. The devil didn't even fool around with these other clowns. He had to go himself. Because I know you can't contend with him. He won himself. So you can move up now. How do you move up? By going down. What did John the Baptist say? I must decrease to allow Christ to increase. So you go lower and you go higher as you go lower. It's the opposite of the thinking patterns of the world. They strive to go up. They strive for positions. They strive for notoriety. They strive for fame. They strive to be known. Uh-uh. You want to be great in the kingdom of heaven, you serve everybody. I'm going to show you now in a minute just how this is going to play itself out. It's going to play itself out because God is he's on track with it. He's moving rapidly to get it done. Now, so here we are. We come to the cross. The hyssop spreads the blood on us, transforms the mind. We're being renewed and regenerated in the inner man. It's the inner man that he's operating on. He's changing the way you think. If he changes the way you think, the Bible says as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. He'll change you by changing the way you think. It's like a young person that you can tell to stay away from hip hop, stay away from this mess, stay away from this garbage. But they like it. See, until they change the way they think, they won't stop liking it. See, it's abnormal to like it. Trashed out, ignorant, 10th grade educated bums singing hip hop music to you and rapping to you. It's, 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 it's abnormal and insane to like this garbage. But I do. Well, you need your mind radically renovated. That's what's wrong. And it won't be renovated until you come to Jesus Christ and accept the cross and accept the salvation and accept the sacrifice he made on it for your life. See, you can't get anybody saved that won't repent and turn from the filth and turn to Jesus as a, as a sacrifice. So, it's all about an act of your will. I will to be saved. But they keep trying to find a way to make it work outside of salvation. They want to think they're good people and I'm alright. I'm doing the best I can, but I still interact with the world. No, you're not. You're lost as a ball in high weeds. If you're a friend of the world, you're the enemy of God. It's just that simple. It don't change for anybody. So you come to Jesus and you hunger and thirst after righteousness. You want to be out of this. I want to be changed. I want to be different. I want my mind renewed. I don't want to think like I used to. I don't want to be what I used to be. I don't want to go where I used to go. I hate that stinking filthy life. You have to hate sin to be saved. And then you present your body as a sacrifice. And then God has access to your mind. Notice how in Romans 12, 1. I beseech thee therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. To prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. It's all about the transformation of the mind so God can get to your mind to renovate you, to regenerate you so the Holy Ghost can indwell you. And then God's on the scene and he just flows out of you from the inner court through the, 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 from the Holy of Holies through the inner court to the outer court. He's coming from the inside out. He's pouring himself out of you. That's why it says, out of your belly shall flow a river of living water. After you renovate it, after you've cleaned, he's coming out. Now, the transformation is wrought just like uh, the first miracle Jesus did. What was the first uh, miracle Jesus did? He turned water to wine. Water goes in to wash. 
wine flows out to refresh. So he changes the water in the vessel to wine. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the refreshing of the Holy Ghost pouring out. The water you wash with is the same water that's going to flow out of you. Now, now watch this. Now, the, the, you got to look at the the the, 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 the figure that it's all about. Because this right here, man, if you know the, the, the revelation of it and can see it, you can, you can put some effort behind getting to it. That's why I paint the picture to say, I'm going to do this. I see it, I'm going after it, I'm going to do it. Jesus... It's the word of God made flesh according to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. There was no manifestation of Jesus as God until the Holy Ghost came upon him. So the Logos is what the Bible says Jesus was. The word Logos in John chapter 1 is the word for the actual intellect or the total totality of who God is. He's the word made flesh. The other word for word in the Bible is the word rhema, which is the spoken word of God, the anointed word of God. Now, as you wash with the water of Jesus, the words of Jesus, what you're doing now, you're bathing in the word of God, the intellect of God, the mind of God is renewing and regenerating you. When the Holy Ghost comes upon that water, he changes it to wine and now it can flow out of you to reach others. You see how the word is Jesus and the Holy Ghost comes on the word? That's what happens to us. That's why the apostle says I'm laboring with you in birth pains until Christ be formed in you. Because God's not going to baptize you of the Holy Ghost. He's going to baptize Christ in you. The more Christ you have in you, guess what? The more Holy Ghost you can hold. That's the mystery of godliness. Christ was manifested in the flesh. The more Christ forms in you, the more Holy Ghost you can hold. Guess won't, what won't be in his way? Huh? The carnal mind. Your carnal mind is what the problem is. That's what my problem is. Can't you see Romans chapter 8 says what? The carnal mind is enmity against God, is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's where my problem is. That's why I got to launch my weapons against my own mind. You deaden your carnal mind, the devil has nothing to use. I don't care, I don't care how many demons are around. If you've got no carnal mind, they don't have a conduit. They got no way of expressing themselves without the carnal mind. The Adamic mind is the devil's playground. I get rid of that stinking hell hole, I get rid of the devil. Period. Now, what's a strong man's job? A strong man is there to build up a fortified place in your mind that he won't let go of. A strong man with a stronghold on what? Your mind. That's what a strong man. A strong man binds the mind. I'm not, you're not going to stop smoking this dope. You're not going to stop looking at this porno. You're not going to stop fornicating. You're not going to stop committing adultery by looking at women with lust in your heart. You're not going to stop doing this sin. You're going to stay right here smoking these cigarettes, drinking this liquor, and being a complete fool, even though you know to do what's right. Strong man, stronghold, bound. But what's the Bible say? What did Jesus say about that? When a stronger than he comes upon him, he binds the strong man, spoils his house, takes his goods. So, okay, now, I'm going to show you a duality of that. One is, you got a demon possessed person like the Gadarene demoniac. You go to the Gadarene demoniac. The Gadarene demoniac had enough strength to throw himself down at Jesus' feet and cry for help. <clears throat> then immediately the demons that controlled him manifested again and Jesus dealt with them and cast them out. He used the man's cry for help to set him free. A stronger than the legion in the Gadarene demoniac, Mark chapter 5, came upon them, drove them out, 
set the man free. He was sitting and clothed in his right mind. I'm going to get to a mystery behind that in just a minute. When I call him, I need this message to show you how it really works. Now, strong man, bound, thrown out. That's one way. Here's the other way. Let's say you got a stronghold in your mind. You recognize within yourself, this thing got a hold on me. I'm doing everything I can to shake it. It keeps plaguing me. Thoughts keep plaguing me. This stuff keeps coming back up in my soul. You know what you can do all by yourself? You can weaken the strong man. How do you weaken the strong man? Fasting. David says, I chasten my soul with fasting. Denial is the way you weaken the strong man. I'm not eating. I'm turning the TV off. Everything that feeds that strong man, I, with an act of my will, will weaken the strong man. And at the same time, what do you do? You take the word in. You pray. You seek God. What are you doing? Within the confines of your own body, your own physical makeup, you are making one part of you weaker and making the other part stronger. Till you dominate that strong man and make him go because you got the upper hand. The mind of Christ has got leverage over the mind of Adam and the demons that it's in covenant with. You see, is that in the Bible? Is that scriptural? Can you prove that? Your mind can be double. You ever read in James? A double-minded man and stable in all of his ways. Don't let that man think he'll receive anything from the Lord. How can you get fresh water and salt water from the same fountain? There's a duality of natures in you. They're at war, flesh and spirit. You have a will that can decide to do anything. I don't care if you're 80 pounds overweight sitting right here right now. In six months, you could be lose 100 pounds. You know how you do it. You will to do it. It's nothing that can't be changed by the human will. I will not eat. I will get up and I will run. I will do these sit-ups. I will not be denied. See, God knows that about a human. So you can't fake him with, I just couldn't do this so hard. I don't know who I could make it. I just, I just gave up. I just. Look, I don't want, you don't want all that blubbering. You can do whatever you will to do. But everybody wants to blame the devil. Like you're Flip Wilson or somebody. The devil made me do it. It's garbage. The devil cannot override the human will. He cannot override the human will. He must get you to agree and then begin to covet and like his mess. And you wallow in it with him. The gospel, it projects itself at the will. See how God don't fool around with a bunch of stuff. He comes at your will. Whomsoever will, let him come and drink of the waters that are freely given. I lay before you blessing, cursing, life and death. Choose life. That's what God, that's what he applies everything to, your will. So, you got this strong man. Gathering demoniac. Jesus, stronger than him. Cast the thing out. Man sitting and clothing in his right mind. Look at John chapter 5. I'll show you another strong man. As we look at a couple of strong men. I showed you one, Mark chapter 5. Read that one in your own time. The gathering the money. Very familiar. John chapter 5. There's a man sick by, by a pool. Bethesda. Bethesda was the pool. Bethesda, I'm sorry, Bethesda was the pool. John chapter 5 verse 2 talks about Bethesda. It means a pool of five porches. An impotent man couldn't walk. It's the Sabbath day. Jesus heals him. 
verse 7 it says him talking to Jesus the impotent man answered him I, and says sir I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while I am coming another steps down before me so nobody could help him Jesus came and told the man what to do to get healed and uh, he just told him basically rise take up your bed and walk don't worry about the pool because it was no, it was uh, the, the, the common thing to happen in verse 4 an angel would come down and stir the waters when the water was stirred the first one in the pool got healed see a lot of her a lot of Bible commentators saying they don't believe that really happened I do I believe an angel came down stirred the pool and the first one in got healed that's what they said I mean, they, well, you know, it's kind of they're, what they're talking about—a type of a type of what? It is what it says. An angel came down and stirred the pool. See, they don't want to believe in anything meta- metaphysical, nothing supernatural. Jesus told him, "Rise, take up his bed, and walk." Verse nine. Immediately, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him. That was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Look at these. these, these, these this is just like today. He answered them. He that made me whole. The same said unto me. Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him. What man is that which said unto thee. Take up thy bed and walk. And he that was healed. Wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away. A multitude being in that place. After what Jesus findeth him in the temple, he said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee. That shows you sin can bring stuff on you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Of the stronghold, religion. You see how badly religion, religion will bind you? It won't let you interact with Jesus. You're concerned about the hierarchy. You're concerned about your Baptist pension. You're concerned about the approval of the Pope and the cardinals and the bishops. You can't serve Jesus in religion. It's impossible. A religious person cannot serve God because they're bound to traditions, organizational structure, and the dictates of man. Cursed is the man that makes flesh his arm. And his heart departs from the Lord. That's what it'll do to you. They're talking to God in the flesh. Jesus Christ has done a supernatural thing. And all they can see is you did this on the Sabbath. How could he do it on the Sabbath? He's just a man standing there. Okay, if he did it, did God work through him to do it? Didn't he have to do it with God's power? You're telling God what he can't do on the Sabbath. This is the blind insanity. This is the strong man. This is a demon spirit that has their minds. A strong man. A cosmocrator. Remember. Continents. Nations. States and provinces. Local municipalities. Counties. Your street. Your home. Possibly you. It's all about the threat level. You can go and travel to different areas and you'll pick up different cosmic craters in the area. We can go somewhere in a, in a downtrodden area. There's a cosmic crater of drugs that live there and rule those people. In the crack house, there's a cosmic crater sitting there enthroned in the crack house. And every crack addict, if they promote the cat crack, is worshiping that cosmic crater. It's a god. He's a demon. He's, de- he's an invisible being. That solicits the activity that's, that's, that's germane to that particular sin to get worship. It's all about worship. All right. So you see how these things work on the mind. They're fooling around with folks' minds to make them subject to themselves because portals and gateways have been opened up. Another example was found. You don't have to turn there in John chapter 11. You know, Lazarus died. 
Jesus raised him from the dead. Went there and raised him from the dead and the people saw him come forth from the grave and it was undeniable that Lazarus had been dead, dead I think four days and Jesus got him up. Now, gateways are opened up. An interdimensional warfare is being fought in that they are coming across heavy. The enemy's in like a flood. Joel, you'll find the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar and the locust coming in, barking the trees. Man, they're in like storm troopers now. Man, everywhere you look, every TV show, every radio broadcast, every Fox News show, everything, Cosmo Craters, demons, Nephilim, man, the place is just, it's like cockroaches in a kitchen, a nasty kitchen at night. The place is overrun with demons. I always point you to the mall and the Walmart to prove my point. Mohawk hair painted orange and green and purple. People looking like, you can't even tell what they are. Covered in tattoos, marked all over themselves. All this is the markings of the Nephilim. All of this tribal marking from the fallen angels that have come across along with the Nephilim that have already been here and they're just releasing them. You know, they can, they can be here, spirits, but not have an avenue or, or, or portal to get in. They can be around, but can't get into you unless a doorway is opened up. Sin is a doorway. Sin is a portal. The activity and the participation in sin opens you up to things that normally wouldn't have been open. You wouldn't have been opened up to, but you participated. You looked at it. You heard it. You fooled around with the Ouija board. You fooled around with the candles and the eight-day burners and the lucky oil and the and all this stuff trying to win the lottery. You got all kinds of rabbit's foots and lucky charms and four-leaf clovers and all this junk. One of the most powerful ambulances you have is a cross with Jesus hanging on it, hanging around your neck. A cross, period. <laughs> if you place faith in that cross. <laughs> what does the symbol of the cross mean to the church? Nothing. <laughs> Don't mean nothing. You know how people believe that this stuff? Don't mean nothing. There are no physical emblems or physical ornaments in the church. None. Christ crucified is all the apostle knew. That's all I know. Statues and all these different icons and all this junk. People, lucky beads and lucky oil and lucky sauce and all this junk, man. What are you doing? Holy water. You go in the Roman Catholic Church and dip your hand in holy water and make the sign of the cross with it. What is that doing? Nothing. Might be cursing you or something. What makes holy water holy water? The priest blesses it. Now it's holy water. Holy water! Think about what we're talking about. This is crazy. And folks can be made to believe it. All this stuff means nothing. It's religious. It makes you what in that organization? Exclusive. This is our thing, how we do it. Our ornaments, our vestures, how we do it makes us exclusively this little group that you don't belong to. Roman Catholic churches won't let you take communion in their church. Did you know that? They'll tell you, if you're not a Roman Catholic, don't take communion. You must be a Roman Catholic to take communion here. What about the saints, the body of Christ? The Pope only makes the saints. I think he made three the other day. The Bible calls everybody born of the Spirit, born of the blood of Jesus Christ a saint. The Pope can't make saints. Well, that's what you don't understand, my brother. Look, brother, you don't understand. The Pope is the vicar of Christ. He's the spokesman for God on the earth. When he sits in that throne, ex cathedra, he speaks with infallibility. He cannot be questioned. He cannot be redressed. He is the Pope, the vicar of the Lord. You heathen. They believe that. To this very day they believe it. And you're going to find that real fast. They mean it for real in just a minute. When the persecution starts up against the real church, you're going to find that people who religiously believe in a false Jesus are coming with, at you with a vengeance. It's not going to be neutral. That's why you got to get your skin 
thicker now because we're fighting an, uh, fighting in an interdimensional warfare. They're reinforced by invisible spirit beings. We get to the cross. We get regenerated. We get our minds renewed. We get washed in the blood of the Lamb by the word of God. To be filled with the Holy Ghost. One spirit to stand against maybe billions of spirits. Trillions of spirits. How, you don't know how many of these things there is. One spirit, the Holy Ghost. To stay the hand of all these billions of demons and fallen angels and Satan. One spirit is all we need. Folks are seeking to be filled with multitudes of demons. All you need is one spirit. Yes. The Holy Ghost. This thing is all about the Holy Ghost. Yes. Notice how Jesus said, you can blaspheme me. You'll be forgiven. But you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost is the apple of God, the Father, and Jesus. Is right. They know he is in the form of a dove. He comes as a servant. To help the body. And you want to blaspheme the arm we extended to help you? There'll be no more repentance for you. He is the only one down here now to save us. To lead and guide us back into all truth and back into the presence of God. How can you blaspheme the only guide back and make it back? You see how stupid it is? People are playing with fire. interdimensional warfare spirit beings coming across in droves God is saying okay I'm looking for warriors I'm looking for folks to fight no man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life that it may please him that chose him to be a soldier I think that's 1st Timothy chapter 2 4 or 2nd Timothy chapter 2 4 one or the other no man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he can please him that has chosen him to be a soldier. That's what you're there for. That's what you're here for. He wants you to fight. He wants you to win. He wants you and I to win. But we can't win as long as we're bound by the world. And we're yoked to it in some inordinate fashion. So we got to get clear from this mess. It's 2 Timothy 2.4. 2 Timothy 2.4. No man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life to please him that has chosen him to be a soldier a warlord with these armies and legions of demons coming across these Nephilim they're looking for breaches they're looking for gateways portals stargates see whatever you whatever you train on whatever you concentrate on is a sacrifice to them if you just spend all your time listening to, to Lil Wayne or Jay Z you're making sacrifices to them so that's what your time is you're sacrificing your time and your energies to be entertained by that spirit it's opened up your mind you'll begin to think like them dress like them take on their actions and their, and their attitudes and their value system You'll walk like them. You'll smoke the same cigars that J3 smokes. Or a replica that's cheaper. See, his cigars may cost a thousand dollars a piece. Yours might cost two dollars down at the corner store. Because all you can afford. But you, at least you're looking like Jay-Z. With a big, thick stokey. Stokey or whatever they call them. You that puffing on the cigar. Looking like a nut. Trying to look like Jay-Z. Or so trying to look like Lil Wayne drinking a cup of codeine. Trying to be wheezy. They call the joke a wheezy. Wasn't that the, guy, the, the woman's name on uh, the Jeffersons? Wheezy! Get in there, wheezy! <laughs> Lil Wayne now, wheezy. This is crazy.